Hello, I'm Dennis O'Donnell, Vice President of Precision PCB Services, Inc. I've been working in the electronics contract manufacturing industry for over 22 years now. And today, I'd like to talk to you about how to evaluate a BGA rework system. And to start with, we're going to talk about demos. So if I'm evaluating the system and I go to see a demo of a BGA rework machine, um, we don't want to see them give me a demo on a little bitty thin board like this or a little bitty cell phone board with really small chips like this. I don't need a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollar machine to remove chips off these type of boards. These type of boards, I can go get myself a hot air gun or a Harbor Freight for 10 bucks and it'll remove these chips just as good as any other expensive machine. What we're talking about is working on big, thick boards, large chips, or boards that are sensitive, are heat sensitive, have heat sensitive components, or they'll warp easy. Ideally, if I'm going to be working a thick Sun Systems board, or I'm going to be working a Cisco Networking Systems board, or if I'm going to be working a LTX board, I need something that will give me a lot of heat and I need to have even heat. I don't want these boards to be getting heated on even, evenly and warping. Likewise, if I'm going to be working with the Sony PlayStation boards, or if I'm going to be working with the Xbox boards, these boards are heat sensitive. They warp very, very easily. The components are heat sensitive. So with these type of boards, we need a machine that can heat them up evenly, top and bottom heat, heat them up slowly and remove these chips with low. So we moved back to my shop now and today I want to show you the uh, Shuttlestar SV550. This is the um, model has been out for quite a while now and recently they've also come out with the SV560 which has a higher resolution system. Um, I'm going to tell you why I like these systems. I've used the uh, higher end machines for over 15 years and um, I started using these and I just fell in love with them. Uh, this is a totally self-contained machine. It has top and bottom hot air. It has infrared perimeter heaters. It allows very even heating of even the largest boards, just like the ones we showed you earlier. Um, but the best thing about the machine, I think, is that it's small. It's totally self-contained. It has its own eternal air, its own vacuum. It runs on a, uh, program a PLC, they call it Programmable Logic Controller. It's about this big, okay, and then it has a little touch screen on the front. Um, let's compare this to the machines on the market. The industry standard right now runs between eighty and hundred thousand dollars. The machine weighs a thousand pounds. It takes around thirty square foot of floor space, and you need a five horsepower air compressor to run it just to get the airflow through. Okay, for the SCB five fifty, what's this take up? about 9 square foot of floor space, weighs 200 pounds, um, doesn't need any external air, uh, it'll run just fine um, by itself. I can run on 220 volts and I can take it anywhere I want it, plug it in, start it up. Um, it's just a really nice system. Um, for the price and space of one of the larger units, I can buy three or four, to, three or four of these for the same price and fit them in the same amount of space. So, do I want to go buy a one big machine for eighty to hundred thousand dollars or do I want to buy four? How, how are we going to be more productive? How are we going to be more efficient? Can we do more with one machine or can we do more with four machines? On top of it, these machines are very easy to use. They have just a small programmable pad here. It has everything in it that you need to program the machine and run it. Um, you don't need a bachelor's degree to run these machines. They're very user friendly. You know, I could teach a kid with an eighth grade education how to operate this machine. No problem, probably even younger, but uh, a lot of the higher end machines, the more expensive the machines, um, you really need to have um, a good education, a lot of knowledge to understand how to run them, how to set up the profiles. So let's get a closer look at this machine, and I'm going to tell you some of the nice features that I like about it compared to other units. Um, we have a nice adjustable rack, it'll do boards up to about 24 inches, even a little bit larger. Um, we have a 
bottom infrared heater that, that moves. So we can move this back and forth and center it on the board to give us even heating. Um, we have some adjustable supports in case we have board warping. But again, I said if you have your profile set up correctly, um, your board shouldn't warp, or you should have very minimal warpage. Um, everything is in, set up, is in setting up a good profile. Uh, now, with any machine that you're going to be placing components, you want to have a vision assist. The vision assist will allow you to line up the solder balls with the circuit board pads. Um, you should be able to get up 100% you know, alignment. Um, this machine is really great because the prism, it moves. It's got an XY movement. Okay? Most other machines, the prisms are stationary. So what happens is, if I have a large component, I cannot see the four corners of the uh, solder balls. I can only get true alignment, you know, in the center of the ship or whatever will fit in the camera. And then some machines use a, what they call a split vision mirror to try and line up the corner. But then that's not a real true time um, vision, visual representation. So what I do is this machine, I can, if I have a large chip, I can zoom to all four corners and, and line up my solder balls in all four corners and make sure I have a very accurate alignment. Um, when we place the chip, I'll give you some close-ups on how that's done. So today, as I uh, may have mentioned earlier, we're going to be working on a uh, lead-free board. Uh, this board is uh, 130,000 thick, 0.130. Uh, have a 2,000 ball VGA that we're going to be installing, and we're using a tacky paste flex to install this. So I've already uh, put the flux and centered the chip on the board. And our chip, you can see, is centered in our screen here. So once we're comfortable, everything's centered accordingly, we can put our camera back in. And we simply go to the keypad here and press pick up. And it'll pick up the chip. Now I'm going to zoom in the camera and then I'll talk you through the alignment so that you can see what we're doing on the screen here. So the machine's picked up the chip. We're going to pull out our, our, our prism or our camera here. And we can see our balls on the screen. It's rather far out, so we're going to zoom in. And this system has a really high zoom rate. So let's just zoom into the center for now. What we want to do is we want to differentiate our solder balls from the circuit board. So if we look here, I've stopped the side. Uh, my solder balls are more of the uh, silvery blue color, and then my circuit board is the yellow color. What I'll do is I'll go to the uh, focus and just focus the circuit board a little better. So you have one control to focus the circuit board, and then we have another control. We're just going to focus the solder balls a little better. So our solder balls are in focus. The machine has a micrometer adjust, left, right, up, down. But basically what we want to do is we just want to get these solder balls so they're right in the center. So we can see that yellow pad goes to the silver ball. And then we should have a little halo, just a, a slightly halo of a, a silver, a silver blue outline around the ball. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move up to the corner. And what we want to do is whatever roll of solder balls we're looking at when we're zoomed in, we want to have the camera or that roll centered in the, in, into the screen. So we can see this is off, we'll just move it over a little bit. And so right now I just want to focus on this roll. This roll is on the center of my screen, so it's a, a true vision. What we're going to do, we're going to line up that top right ball. There we are. My top right ball is lined up. And I'm just going to go straight down and make sure that my bottom right ball here it was lined up. So we can look, look it up and down this row. We can see it's perfectly straight. The chip is not crooked. If it was crooked, we can do a z-axis adjust. And this turns the chip so that we can get it to go straight. This is readjusting here now. Check one more time. OK. And so now we'll go to the bottom row. we we'll go over to the left. Put that line up to the center of the screen here. You can see we're off just a little bit, so let's just Adjust our z-axis, go back on center again. So this is lower left, lower right, upper right, 
and then upper left. All 100% on the pad. And we just go back to the center and just check our center balls. Chips 100% aligned. Very nice. We can zoom in more if we want. I'm comfortable with this, so we'll stop with that. And one. So we're going to put our prism in. We're going to take our keypad. We're going to click on the solder command. It's going to go down. Place our component. It'll back off a few thousandths. That's what I have machine set to 2.5 mil back off. And now it's soldering the component. So what we have here is I've attached a uh, thermocouple to an external measuring unit so that you can see the temperature. Um, the machine does have its own internal uh, temperature sensing but so we can watch on the video here a lot easier. I just plugged it into a digital meter. Um, the thermocouple is on the bottom of the board located under the BGA component and what we want, we want our circuit board to, with a lead free to be a, about 235 uh, minimum, 235 or 250 maximum Celsius uh, to get a good solder ball reflow. Uh, and so what I want to demonstrate to you is that when we come up with temperature um, of reflow temperature that we have a good even profile and that the board you can see it's not warping at all. We can see we are uh, getting close to reflow temperature here. It's 210C. And our board, um, it's not warping, it's still in very straight. Uh, with these type of chips, you can't afford to have it warp or the bridge on the corners. Uh, so in closing, I'd just like to say, um, if a machine looks cheap, it probably is cheap. If it looks like they took a uh, camera and a uh, heater and put it in a fancy plastic case and attached it to a microscope stand, um, you know, it's probably not much better than a hot air gun, uh, so don't waste your money on that stuff. Um, you want something that's going to be able to do some uh, pretty heavy stuff, and the best way to do it is to take your product and take it to the company and ask for a demo on their machine. Make sure it's using your product, not something they want to use, because a lot of these companies have machines that are junk, and this is all they'll do, and they make it look real simple, and it's not a simple task. Um, we give free demos on our machines here in uh, Oroville, California. We're about an hour north of Sacramento. So if you want to bring your product to our place and get a demo, you're more than welcome to. Um, we travel around the San Francisco Bay Area. And so we're down in that area um, about once a month. So if you have a company down there, you'd like us to bring the machine down and demo it, we bring our machine down. Um, we do on-site demos, no charge. Uh, we're impressed with our product, we support our product, and we stand behind our product. Thank you for watching.